So we got to move on here to the second division of the Oceanside Stakes at a mile on the Jimmy Durante uh, turf course. Um, you know, we I think we both know who we like here. I'll let you start off with your top pick. Our t my top pick is Joe Lito for Joe Talamo, John Sadler, and he's five to one on the morning line. We'll see if he stays up there. I'm, I don't think he will, although there are a few nice horses in here. I know Sea Sage is well liked. He's coming from Europe and Rosengold, who since he lost his main race, which you can just cross that off because he probably needed the race. He's been undefeated. He's run on the turf three times undefeated there. So Rosengold, I looked at him at first when I looked at this race, just at the horses, I said, man, Rosengold's going to be really tough to beat. But the more I think about it, Sea Sage, Sea Sage is a horse who's led to the lead, led straight to the lead, led to the lead. These are his running lines for all these races. So Seasage, the six, is going to go to the lead. He's a fast horse. And Rosengold, I thought he might be the one out in front, but I'm not so sure because Seasage is going to be with Rosengold early, and I think they can set up a good pace. Jolito is a type of horse who's versatile. He can sit off the pace. He can be towards the front. And I think if they're a fast pace develops between those two and another horse, Olympic Blue, he's another one that might be part of the pace. You've seen that he's going to lead in many of his races. Jolito can sit off these speedsters and run them down and hold off the closers. Jolito's going to get a great trip here. Seven post is good. Again, Rosengold has the nine post, and it's hard to win from the outside. I've said this before. He's not in the ten hole, but the nine hole is difficult as well. So Joe Lito, he's going to get a good trip. He's by Rock Hard 10. Looks like I want Rock Hard 10. His, hey, I want freaking Rocket. He's by Rock Hard 10. So hopefully Rock Hard 10's two horses take down both the Oceanside stakes. And Joe Lito might be a little bit of a price, a little minor upset here. He was run nice since going in the turf course. So Joe Lito is my top pick here. Yes, Jolito is my top pick as well here. I, I, we both agree. I really like his efforts. He's coming well fresh. Um, I just think there's just plenty of speed in this race that sets up nicely for Jolito. I mean, C. Sage, if you look at his uh, little notes there on the right, you see lead uh, to lead uh, a furlong and a half. Uh, Olympic Blue shows some speed, uh, as well as Rosengold is the speedster. He's going to look to pull the My Best Brother uh, of last summer here same connections for Julio Canani and uh, Martin Garcia uh, this horse has won his last four races uh, he loves the turf course he's raced in the stakes races at, at both Betfair Hollywood Park and Santa Anita uh, his last race was pretty impressive he went off to a big lead and he was able to hold on there by a neck at this distance um, he's just going to try to pull the the best uh, my best brother of last year I think but I think there's just a little too much speed for him today uh, with I think show some magic as well will be showing speed for Peter Miller, Peter Miller, Edwin Maldonado as well. I see the blinkers are being added on. To me, this just screams with the switch of rider to Edwin Maldonado. This horse is just screaming that it's going to go to the front. Edwin Maldonado. I'm sure Peter Miller uh, will tell him that. I, I just think the blinkers on is just it all indicates that this horse is going to be going to the front. And there's a couple of other speedsters, so it sets up very nicely for Jolito. Uh, that's why I made him my top pick. And my second pick here, I'm going to go with the other side of their horse here on the outside with Rising Legend. Uh, Julian Lepru will ride. This horse uh, hasn't raced since November, though. But, uh, you know, his workouts haven't been uh, outstanding. But I think this horse, if he races the way he did back in, in uh, November in the Grade 3 Generous, where he only lost by half half a length and he had Le Peru aboard then and Le Peru sees fit to ride here again um, there's just positive seeing here I think Rising Legend he may need the race but I, I, I think he's capable of uh, you know with the with the fast pace that I'm projecting that if Jolito doesn't close I, I think Rising Legend will be closing as well I absolutely agree with you he's gonna I, like I said I think he's gonna there's gonna be plenty of pace in this race too and Rising Legend that's gonna be perfect for him again the outside post little bit difficult to win, especially off a layoff off these nice horses here. But Rising Legend has finished in the money every start he's run. So he's very consistent. He's going to come with a big run at the end, I think. I think John's going to have him ready for this race. It's just a matter of if he's good enough because, again, he's off a layoff. He might need the race. We don't know. But John will have him cranked up ready to go because that's how John is. It's, with his horses, it's just a matter of if this horse is good enough. I'm going to go with my second pick with Rosengold just because 
He's undefeated on the turf course. He hasn't done anything wrong. And I think even if there's a fast pace up ahead, he might be able to sit off it. But that being said, I don't think that he wants to be too far off it because he just likes to be towards the front. So Rosengold, with a fast pace, may have a hard time holding on. I think he can be beaten, but I would be shocked if he didn't hit the board here unless if he just gets in a ridiculous fast pace and just dies out at the end. But Rosengold's run a ton of good races. He won the Tsunami Slough, the Pasadena, the Baffle, his maiden special weight race. So he hasn't done anything wrong. And if he runs the way he does, there's no reason why, at the very least, he's not going to hit the board here. So you have to use him. Yeah, speaking of other horses in this race, I'm not sure if you know this, but it, do you are, uh, do we know if Pure Loyalty will be racing in this Oceanside stage? Well, no word on Pure Loyalty yet. The three, uh, he was entered in the race on Friday with no more, as was the also eligible R.S. Watson. So if Pure Loyalty scratches, R.S. Watson gets in the race, but that doesn't mean R.S. Watson's going to run because... He's entered in the race on Friday. These trainers are allowed to decide which race they want to run in. So uh, tomorrow, a Tuesday, we're going to find out the early scratches there. We'll probably see no more on that early scratch scratch list. We'll see if R.S. Watson and Pure Loyalty are on there. But just keep that in mind that the three Pure Loyalty and the 11, R.S. Watson, who's on the also eligible list at the moment, those two are entered for Friday. So there could be a couple defections out of this race. Yeah, it would be interesting. If Pure Loyalty does scratch out, it would be interesting to see if they do want to put R.S. Watson in here because R.S. Watson would be another speed horse uh, added to the mix. And that, that just makes me love uh, both Jolito and Rising Legend even more if, the, if R.S. Watson can sneak in. But 